Hi, my name is Marek Lies. I'm a senior application engineer at Texas Instruments Precision Linear Group. I'd like to talk to you today about long-term stability of operational amplifiers, how various datasheet parameters change over the life of a product. There are two types of PDS specs. There is the kind of specs that are centered around zero or mean value, like voltage offset, drift, reference voltage, or open loop gain, where the specs can change by 100% of the PDS specified maximum or minimum value. There is also the kind of specs centered around absolute value, like quiescent current, slew rate, or short circuit current, where the specs can change over the life of a product by plus minus 10% of the maximum or minimum specified PDS value. Before I get into the details how various parameters change over the product life, I'd like to refresh the information about the normal Gaussian distribution. On the right side, we can see the graph showing the normal Gaussian distribution, where distribution between plus minus one sigma represents 68% of all the units, distribution between minus and plus two sigma represents 95.4% distribution, and so forth. The next slide shows how distribution changes over the life of a product. The blue curve shows the initial distribution, the distribution of all the parameters as we test them and ship to the customers. The green curve, the flattened at the top, shows how things change over the life of a product. You might notice that the sigma doubles over the 10-year life of a product. Talking about specifics, how different parameters change over the life of a product, I'd like to talk about the voltage offset and voltage offset drift. At the PDS table, one may see the typical value of the voltage offset of 30 microvolts, which represents one standard deviation, with the maximum voltage offset of 120 microvolts, which represents four sigma deviation. Similarly, when it comes to the drift, the standard deviation is 0.35 microvolts per degree C with the maximum value of one microvolts per degree C. The distribution of the voltage offset one may see on the left side. Over the life of a product, the maximum value of 120 microvolts can double and can become 240 microvolts. It is important to understand that the only units that were on the edge of the maximum limit can move to 240 microvolts, doubling the maximum voltage offset. Units that were at zero can move to plus 120 microvolts or minus 120 microvolts. Whereas the unit which was initially at 50 microvolts can move to 170 microvolts or to minus 70 microvolts. For that reason, only the units that was at 120 microvolts can possibly move to 240 microvolts. And the units that was at zero can move to either plus 120 microvolts or minus 120 microvolts. Since 120 microvolts represents four sigma in this distribution, the likelihood of the unit being at 120 is one in 15,000. For this unit to move from 120 microvolts to 240 microvolts would represent one in 15,000 square. That means only one in 225 million could possibly shift to 240 microvolts. In cases of graphs, like the one shown on the right, one may still estimate what is the maximum value of the drift? Since the graph on the right represents the typical distributions of the drift with its end tail representing three sigma distribution, it is very easy for the customer to estimate what the standard deviation is by taking the end value and dividing it by three. 
you can estimate that the tail is, in this case, around 12 microvolts per degree C, dividing by 3 sigma, one may guesstimate that the sigma is around 4 microvolts per degree C, and estimate relative maximum or minimum value of that spec. What do I mean by relative maximum and minimum? What I mean is, by accepting certain fallout rate, where the unit falls outside of such limit, customer can estimate what the maximum or minimum value is. In this particular case, if customer accepts that one in 370 units is going to be outside of such limit, multiplying three by four microvolts per degree C will give 12 microvolts C limit. By accepting one in 15,000 that's going to fall outside of such limit, customers can set its relative minimum or maximum value at 16 microvolts per degree C, and so forth. For spec centers around some fixed value, like in this case quiescent current or short circuit current, it is clear that those specs cannot double in its value or become zero since the product would stop working. In such cases, the specs can move by plus minus 10%. In this case, this is represented by the red band around the typical value shown in this graph. Likewise, in case of short circuit current versus temperature, this band represents the plus minus 10% variation from its typical value. Most of the long-term stability specs are not shown in a data sheet. Notable exception is how voltage reference changes over time. In this case, you may see that the initial value changes much faster initially and then becomes much more linear. In PDS, it's shown that the initial reference voltage changes by 50 ppm in the first 1,000 hours, but only 5 ppm in the second 1,000 hours. This is very typical of all parameters, how they change over the life of a product. In summary, there are two types of specs and one may estimate the maximum expected parameter shift of various parameters over a given period by understanding how they change over the life of a product. There are the specs that change 100% of the maximum or minimum PDS guarantee value, and there are the specs that change only by 10% of its value. One may use this knowledge to prorate how various parameters can change over any given period of time. It needs to be understood, however, that long-term shift is not exactly a linear function of time. The change is much more steep initially, and it flattens over time. Therefore, the linear character of the shift usually excludes the first month or so of the life of a product in a field due to continuing self-curing of the molding compound. Before I conclude our conversation, I'd like to touch on the important topic of the process rate and the so-called acceleration factor. The equation here shows how the process rate changes at different temperature. In this example, I'm comparing the process rate at 65 degrees C to a process rate at 150 degrees C where most of our products undergo life test. In this case, calculating the acceleration factor, we coming up with the number of 125. This means that every hour of stress at 150 degrees C is equivalent to 125 hours of continual operation at 65 degrees C. Therefore, 300 hour life test at 150 degrees C would cause similar shift in a product as the 37 and a half thousand hours or about four years of our continuous operations in a field at 65 degrees C. Thank you very much for watching and for more information please go to the following web addresses.